Hello, hello. Welcome to the JV Show. This is Jorge. And this is Viv. And this week we have our star on the show. Hello. Welcome back. Yep. Thank you. Uh, so this week's going to be a little bit different, guys. We're going to do a two-part informational. So I don't know if uh, many people have heard our very first podcast. If you have, thank you. Um, it was pretty crude and very raw, I guess. That was like our Just first one. Like that was like it. when you first started podcasting, yeah. Yeah, right? It was literally on that couch. When that coach was here. Yeah, over here in this corner where I'm sitting. Yeah, and then we just had a single mic. And we just all talked into mm-hmm. it. So it was very, uh, yeah, very raw. Uh, so I'm going to redo it because a lot of people ask about it. And uh, I think people have forgotten how important sleep is. That's important as fuck. I feel like you talk about it on like almost every podcast that you can. Yeah, actually. And I'm pretty happy that Viv's, Viv's talking about it now too. It's converted, guys. Viv's gone converted. Are you, are you really though? Yeah, I she's sleep a, a lot now. <laughs> hmm. She thinks about sleeping a lot. At least. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> what? No, I actually, I actually try to sleep. She, I, I think that's the first step. You know, oh no, that's not the first step. The first step is denial, probably, right? Yeah, and yeah, A yeah. couple steps later, she now accepts that she needs more sleep, and she's conscious about making it a, a habit. Yes, right. maybe like once a week, I'll only have like four hours, but I mean, dude, the rest with, of it is pretty with bad, volleyball, pretty bad. it's impossible, it's tough, right? Yeah. yeah. Because it messes up your whole schedule. And I guess when we talk about sleep and schedules and all this stuff, you'll kind of see why it's like pretty pretty terrible that we have that fluctuation there. Uh, but anyways, the book I read is called Why We Sleep Why We Sleep by uh, Matthew Walker. Uh, so Why We Sleep, Unlocking the Power of Sleep and Dreams. Uh, pretty much I got inspired by reading this book on the powers of sleep. And then instead of telling everyone I know about it, individually i want to do a podcast but and that's how the first podcast of the jv show started you and had a lot of faith that a lot of our friends would actually listen in on this uh so far it's only you i think you and our star probably i think our star kind of listened to it um yeah but i think he didn't get the full like thing like, like you you heard you heard about it but you didn't get the deep dive on it right yeah yeah and i didn't read that book yeah yeah but i mean, I mean. <laughs> what 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 because <laughs> like, you didn't need to clarify that i'm pretty sure you didn't read it <laughs> Uh, but yeah, okay, so we'll start with why we sleep. And then, um, so this first episode is going to be just the basics. So if you hear, if you're here and you just want to know about the basics, here is this yeah, episode right is going to be, yeah, this episode is going to be where all the basics are. Then the next episode, right after this one, the week after, we're going to go deep. We're going to talk about dreams. We're going to talk about diseases. We're going to talk about some wacky stuff. And then we'll talk about our own anecdotal experiences. Because uh, I'm actually very interested to see what. Viv and Arstar kind of thinks about some of their sleep experience. But first, we'll start about basics. So do you guys know how typically people sleep? Like, it's, it's kind of weird, like a weird question. Because you just like, you just, you know, close your eyes in your bed and all of a sudden you're out or, so, or something like that. Like, what's what's your process of, of falling to sleep, each of you? I wait until I'm tired as fuck and then I'm like, okay, fine, I'm going to pass out. But... Like, are you asking about like, what like, do you think, like you want us to explain like what we how we sleep? believe sleep is? No, like... like like okay, you're now in bed. What do you think of? What's the process? What's what's mm. the five minutes right before you get to bed? What's what do you do while you're in bed? And then how do you actually pass out? Like what 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 is that time frame like for you guys? For me, it depends. Sometimes, like when I come back from volleyball, I'll be just full of adrenaline, and no matter how hard I try to sleep, I literally yeah. just cannot sleep. And then at that point, I just like get out of bed and like walk around or like go do something because <clears throat> I feel like. There's this thing that I was reading, not a, not from a book, but like an article. And basically it was saying that like, wherever you sleep, you should like have it, have that space only to sleep. Right. So I try not to like do other shit in my bed. Uh, yeah. Like, I don't know, like eat and like whatever. Right. Cause, or like work you know because yeah. uh yeah like some sort of psychological thing but anyways so if i can't sleep i'll like walk downstairs like i don't know go on my computer like walk around find something to eat or something i don't know but um when i do try to sleep i'll like generally close my eyes and then i'll try and like just like focus on my breathing or like just very random thoughts about like my surroundings and usually like by then i just like knock out like i don't remember what i'm thinking about yeah. but usually it's just about random shit yeah if i'm thinking about anything else i cannot fall asleep oh okay okay yeah because like your your mind's racing too much if you are thinking about like yeah i guess semi-important things or anything like right that. yeah, yeah. So, like sometimes 
like if I have like a work deadline or something, like I'll be like, okay, like did I finish this? Like, what's my day look like tomorrow? Then like, next thing I know, and like I'm lay- laying in bed for like half an hour. I'm like, all right, this is this is stupid. I'm, yeah, I might as well just like get out of bed. Yeah. How, how about you, Viv? Mine sounds kind of the same. So do you want to know like my routine? Uh no, or... not 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 completely. Just 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 the the couple minutes before and stuff. Oh, I like to read like one chapter or one or two chapters, depending on how short the chapter is of a book before I go to sleep every night. And then I will. Does that make you tired? No, like, like, like reading? Because I know some people, well, I, I've had, I've had some people tell me like while they're reading, like the book just like falls on like their mm. chest and then they just knock out and, and then the next day, like. Or sometimes like their phone. I've had that happen to me before and I thought it was a good thing. I was like, oh great, the book's helping me sleep. But then I later realized that, dude, this book's so hot, fucking hard to read. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like um, this is an unreadable book. I was going to say that like it usually makes me feel more like calm but not necessarily go to sleep because if the book's actually interesting, then mm. I'll want to stay up and I always have to like limit myself to how many chapters I read because it's almost the same as like watching TV to me essentially, but then it's less stimulating. And then I'll spend a solid five minutes saying goodnight to Lumi and telling her how much of a good girl she is and giving her belly rubs and like hugs and kisses and stuff like that. And then eventually I'll put my phone away and I'll lay in bed and I'll close my eyes and I'll do like the same thing. I'll just see what I'm thinking about and try not to think about anything serious and just think about random shit until I fall asleep. Oh, uh, okay. Wait, so do you read in your bed or do you read somewhere I else? I read in my bed though. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think um I think that's fine like the minutes before sleep to read is fine. Um but yeah, so I do something similar. I read and then I just go to bed. But I do have a thing where um I used to like think of like a story. Like I'm actually like, you know, I'm the protagonist of the story. I'm thinking of the story and then all of a sudden I'll pass out. Oh, I do that sometimes. Yeah. But uh there is times where I'm just thinking about actual things. Uh and then while I'm thinking about something, I start forgetting things. I was like, what the fuck? Like and then and then the the thoughts start getting more fuzzy and then like I'll consciously know oh I'm 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 going out right now <laughs> like this is like what? this is me going out really really soon like give an example uh I'll I'll just think of like oh yeah um I remember I had to do this thing and it was someone's birthday and oh yeah what date was that oh shit I don't even remember oh, like you're the date something? yeah and then and then all of a sudden I was like oh wait who's that what's that person's even what, what's their last name oh what what car do they even drive and then all these memories <laughs> just start getting so fuzzy and then and then I'm out um, yeah it, it sounds like you're going down like a like a huge like tangent kind of yeah 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 like i'm trying to pull information and as soon as my brain knows that like oh i can't pull anything like for some reason this this is very known thing that i always know about like like your brother's name or something i all of a sudden i can't pull that information and i'm like oh fuck i'm i'm this is like i consciously know that i'm about to go unconscious that bothers the fuck out of me like when you try when you try to like think of something and you're like like what is what is the name of this thing or like what is that like i literally will not be able to sleep until i think of that Mm. me too i'm the same i'll literally wake up and write it down on my phone if i have to to like search this up later yeah i think for me it's fine but anyways that was a a bit of a tangent to the start but the start is like how people technically fall asleep there's two things that help you fall asleep the first is i think something very obvious to everyone is the circadian rhythm so it's like your body's own 24-hour clock so your body knows uh, when it's day and when it's night. I think our star just came back from vacation, so his is probably fucked up right now. Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah, it, it's like it's not okay. So I just came back from Japan, but uh, like I feel like I'm not in like the Japan time zone or like yeah, yeah. my local time zone. You're like in in like in somewhere between. That's yeah, really messed yeah, up. Yeah. And 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 the thing about the circadian rhythm is it's a 24 ish hour clock. It's actually a bit more than 24 hours. Uh, but our brain uses cues to sync it into 24 hours. So, for example, when you eat, when you see sunlight, when you when it's dark out, mm. it takes those cues and it turns this 24-ish hour clock to a 24-hour clock. Um, and how they know this is a real thing is I think first they test it in plants. They're like, they put this plant. So, I think there's just one plant where they put in the sun and when it had contact with sunlight or when the sun came up it the the thing bloomed and then when it was dark it it, it it went back right but they took the same plant and they put it in like a dark room and it still did the same thing and they're like what the fuck's going on oh, sick. Uh, so then they did this with humans they took two humans into a very deep cave these are two like scientists um and and they wanted to test this on themselves they stayed there for 30 days so i think there's nothing there but like artificial light but 
Actually, I'm not even sure. Yeah, no, that had to be artificial light. light yeah. Still works. But um, the the thing was, technically, if you're there for 30 days, you wouldn't know when the 28th day is, or 28th day is, or when the 27th day is, or when the 26th day is. You might know what it is based on when you sleep and when you wake up and all that stuff like that, right? Uh, they logged everything they did, and they found out that for some way, even though not seeing the sun, they still like were on pretty pinpoint, like they'll eat right at eight a.m. and stuff like that. With this artificial light, uh, the artificial light wasn't controlling them. They they were controlling it. So like the time they sleep and the time they woke up was following their circadian rhythm, which we previously thought was directly related to the the sun. But that's just a subset of it, as in like、mm-hmm. it's it's in our body. So if there was no sunlight, we would still have this rhythm. And 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 that was their experiment. If we were to like go away from the sun for thirty days, if you do it for three days, you can kind of guess how long three days is, right? But for thirty days, like how do you know when fifteenth day is and when twentieth day is? That's、yeah. kind of fucked up now, right?、Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's how they found out. Like, oh, okay, like this is a this is a thing not completely related to the sun. It's our own body. And then what they did is they measured like temperature, blood pressure, all that stuff, and that is all related to your. To your rhythm.、Now. Wait, so I don't understand what the point of the light is.、Um, the light helps cue cue you in. So as in,、um, so so when does it turn on and off, and like what controlled that? The themselves. No, no. It's just like you're you're, you're in a completely dark cave. Oh, you like you have、stuff. a light switch. Yeah. yeah. Oh, like, okay. Like they have、okay. some type of artificial light to do stuff, right? To like do their experiments and like do tests and stuff. Um, but that has nothing to do with、oh, the actual. Okay, okay, okay. Per, they're pretty much saying with lack of sunlight, for some reason, we could still figure out how long a day actually is, approximately, using just our body, right?、Uh, and that's related to the circadian rhythm,、um, which, yeah. So I think one cycle is actually twenty four and a quarter hours, not exactly twenty four hours,、uh, but it's it's around there.、Um, And then, like I said, the the external side of it kind of helps cues you into that twenty four hour clock that that the the world is used to.、Uh, and then, so then it's different for everyone. I think it's mostly related to your genetics. So, so some people are genetically in tune to be early birds. Some people are more genetically in tune to be night owls. And then some people are in in between the two. Um. So it's it's it kind of sucks because like if you work nine to five. But you're genetically tuned to like wake up at ten or eleven,、uh, then you're kind of fucked. But can you can you train your circadian rhythm though?、Uh, like, yeah, you you could.、Uh, so it's kind of like jet lag and stuff. You like shift it、uh, one way or the other. But for some reason, some people are just more into like waking up when the、like、sun comes up and stuff.、Playing. Yeah, yeah. Um. So then, this circadian rhythm also helps time when your melatonin kicks in. So right around like sleep time, it'll start kicking in the melatonin for you to go to bed.、Uh, but melatonin doesn't actually make you sleep, if that makes sense. Is that like so? I think a lot of like people always think like, oh yeah, melatonin helps. It helps, but it doesn't make you sleep. So yeah, yeah. Me- melatonin kind of tells your body, hey, it's time to sleep. But、like、start the cycle, kind of. Yeah,、thing. but it doesn't say like, oh, like. It's not、I、like a sleeping pill. Yeah, it's like, ex- it exactly. It makes you drowsy. Exactly. It's、yeah. just it's just telling your body, okay, start doing the things that help you sleep, which is like lower your body temperature. Um, you know, do all these other things. Your alertness will start to go down, etc., etc. Right. Have you ever taken melatonin?、Uh, I have not, but yeah, I don't think I have. But like, like weed and stuff has it in it, right? What really? Does it have any melatonin? I don't know, actually. Wrong person to ask, man. Wait, have have you have you had melatonin? melatonin? Yeah, I used to take it a lot actually. Oh yeah, I heard I heard I heard it can like、really? fuck up your body. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. But I've never taken it. Uh, so the only recommendation they really have in the book and from what I read is like to take it when、uh, you're in like traveling. So、oh, to、yeah. try to force your body to sleep at the right time. To, like, like for short term, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. For like fixing jet lag and stuff. Uh, and then one thing is when you go from this is a weird thing. I don't know if you guys ever thought about this, but did you guys know when you go from east to west? What was it? Or when you travel westward, it's easier to adjust than if you travel eastward.、Mm-hmm. What the hell? Yeah. yeah. So so when you travel eastward, you have to sleep earlier. Right, because right now, so say you're going forward in time. Is that yeah? So so yeah. Well, actually, yeah, because 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 right now it's six thirty ish here in Toronto. It'd be eight thirty, right? Yeah. Uh, wait, is that how it works? <laughs> If you travel one way, it's fast. It's better. Harder to acclimate traveling from traveling east rather than west. 
Yes, traveling east is easier than traveling west. Okay, yeah, yeah. So traveling to Toronto will be easier because, uh, no, no, it'll be harder because you'd be forced to sleep earlier. Right. So mm-hmm. it's it's harder to force yourself to sleep earlier, but it's easier to stay up late. Mm, yeah, if that makes sense. Because staying up late is like an active thing you can do, but forcing yourself to sleep earlier is not an active thing you can do. Yeah, you can't like your, your actively body, your body's sleep. not ready. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. can't just tell yourself like Fuck, sleep, goddamn it, right? <laughs> um. So yeah. So that's just Wait, that's. So I have a question. So then, yep. So then, like, if you're to travel from like a polar east to polar west, like on the opposite sides of the globe, would it just be better to just, like? Uh, like, I mean, get no, the travel yeah. route. Like, yeah, you know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, which I, I don't, I don't think it matters if you're going from poles <laughs> yeah, to pole. Yeah. Oh. Because okay, then it's just end, end, end destination, right? Is it? I don't know. Yeah. Like to travel eastward versus actually westward. it'd be better to travel in sync with the earth's rotation because the it's travel faster. time would be shorter that's fair. <laughs> is that's what fair. i would say Damn. <laughs> that, that that would be my best guess on that but i don't think for sleep it matters because you're on the exact you're getting you're going to the same place just different different way right yeah so that probably won't matter but so that's the first thing that kind of helps you fall asleep then the next thing is sleep pressure uh so there's a thing in your brain or there's a chemical called uh adenosine and every minute or every hour you are awake, this thing accumulates in your brain. Uh, so you just get more and more of this chemical. And only after you actually sleep, that chemical goes away. Oh. Yeah. Uh, so it pretty much just, it builds up in your brain and if, like it pretty much causes you to be drowsy and stuff. And um, when you take caffeine, that's the thing that blocks it. Oh. So caffeine blocks those same receptors that the adenosine would have attached to to make you feel sleepy. So then that, that's what makes you feel more awake is that you don't have that adenosine activating on you. Um, but caffeine's kind of fucked. Uh, it depends on the half-life. So I think for everyone, it's different. But if you take it too late in the day, then it messes up with your sleep and stuff. Uh, but taking it like early in the day, it's, I don't think. I, okay, so I don't know if it's a big deal or not because it's like... Um, it's pretty much the world's biggest drug, drug experiment, yeah. right? Because like no one's ever seen what the late long-term effects are, but I guess it's not that big of a deal. Is 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 what I'm guessing. Of what caffeine? It, yeah, it can ruin your dopamine threshold if you keep drinking too much, or if you depend on caffeine too much. Yeah, that's what I assume. I I personally don't take that much at all. Like like very minimal. Um, and it's only some tea and I only just started trying that out just for fun. You know how some people say like, oh, don't talk to me before I have my coffee. Like that's <laughs> actually the case because their, their dopamine threshold is below average. Oh, so they need that because to, they're yeah. dependent on caffeine now. They yeah. need caffeine just to bring them to like actually normal Pretty levels. Yeah. 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 So the one thing about these two systems, your like circadian rhythm and this sleep pressure thing, this, this chemical that builds up your brain, they're completely independent right uh so that's why when you pull an all-nighter like right after you pull an all-nighter like the morning of you feel like a burst of energy that's your circadian rhythm kicking in Mm. right so it's like it's like your adenosine keeps building 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 and then your and then at nighttime your circadian rhythm wants you to sleep so that's when like there's the most pressure of sleep and then all of a sudden, the morning after, if you pull it all nighter, your circadian rhythm starts building up, and then your adenosine also still keeps going. But the buildup of the circadian rhythm is what gives you that like boost Second of energy. Wind. Yeah, mm, but it's not good. It's not like it's not what you should be doing, right? Um, but yeah, if uh, if if you th- if you, if you ever guys ever wonder why, that's that's pretty much pretty much the case. Um, and then uh, uh, caffeine's kind of messed up too because like uh even decaf stuff has like 15 or 30 percent of regular really like it has to be really? like no calf like decaf no still has 15 to 30 percent dose of regular oh shit whoa what i thought yeah. it was zero that's what that's what okay that's what this book is saying that's what this book is saying um but yeah oh huh. yep but yeah that's uh how did it how do they remove the caffeine from? I have no idea. I don't know the science about caffeine. removing caffeine and shit as a drug and stuff. But okay, so surprisingly, or not surprisingly, the circadian rhythm thing where I was talking about, um, not only does it like time when you sleep, it also changes your mood, uh, amount of urine you make, your core body temperature, your metabolic rate. And also there's a reason why like 
uh olympic records are always set like during this specific time period is because mm-hmm. like everyone peaks around like this mid afternoon area oh cool right so like if you like peak performance wise you uh you max out there anyways google says uh it's about two percent two percent okay well I'll, well i guess this book fucking doesn't know shit about caffeine um but yeah uh so yeah so that's that's why the circadian rhythm also helps with olympic records and shit interesting yep well okay the way that decaf coffee is made is that the beans are soaked in water and solvents mostly ethyl acetate to dissolve the caffeine from the beans whoa easy what if that alters the taste i've never actually tried decaf coffee before it tastes like for me it tastes relatively the same but like i just I don't know like it, it is it does taste like a little bit different but i feel like i don't even know actually yeah i don't sorry just it's like a waste of coffee right <laughs> <laughs> yeah well sometimes like okay well i started drinking decaf whenever i do like a caffeine detox and i like try not to drink any caffeine for like i don't know like three to four weeks and then obviously like yeah there's like very little amounts of caffeine in decaf but I, th- I feel like the placebo effect is kind of like, like it works for me drinking decaf. Mm, mm, but yeah. Possibly. But yeah. Interesting. Do you like toss your beans around and like, oh, I don't know if I'm getting decaf or <laughs> caffeine today. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Caffeine roulette. <laughs> uh, okay. So those are the two things that make you sleep. So as basics, uh, circadian rhythm, sleep pressure. Sure. Uh, so now the actual part of sleep. So there's sleep cycles. Um, the cycles are kind of messed up. So there's no, it's not like creative or anything. So there's NREM sleep. That's non-rapid eye movement sleep. Mm, and then there's uh, yeah. So NREM sleep has stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four, and there's REM sleep. So they didn't want. I guess they didn't want to name the four stages, so they just called them one, two, three, four. <laughs> and then there's REM <laughs> sleep. Uh, but they do some different things. Uh, if you guys can see, there's a chart of like how much you get. So usually you get more NREM deep sleep uh early in the night uh so like when you first go to bed and stuff and then more REM sleep uh in the morning kind of thing so in your later cycle so i think each cycle is approximately 90 minutes long so if you go to bed an hour and a half so i think they recommend seven to nine hours so then that will mean you'll get either seven and a half hours which is equates to five cycles or you get six cycles which is nine hours so that's why they usually recommend seven to, to nine hours because you get that range um of cycles um but yeah so those are the cycles and each of pretty much there is a time where you kind of like semi wake up Mm. between cycles but you don't actually know about it you're like unconscious but then you go straight back to the next stage um and there's two two types again and run sleep is uh non non rapid eye movement sleep and how they kind of use a analogy for this actually okay let's let's go back a step so so when you, when you go to sleep lab how they test if you're actually asleep is they have probes to test your brain so they, they want to see what your brain is saying uh they have probes to test your muscles and then they have probes to test to see your eye movement mm-hmm. so those 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 are the three things that kind of dictate like which part of the sleep cycle you're in and stuff uh, so when you're in NREM sleep, you can still have some muscle twitches and movements. Um, but the way they find out is your brain is different. You're, you're like the, the actual brain waves is a lot different. So I think there's a little graph here in the book that shows um, how different. It is. So pretty much during REM sleep and during awake time, your brain waves are like super, super chaotic. What are brain waves? Uh, pretty much if you put probes in your brain it'll have something that generates so you know how like um, actually I don't know if everyone knows like, about this like movement from your brain like seeing how so okay if I want to tell you move your right hand I can put a probe in your brain and I know exactly I can tell which neurons like are getting fire. fired okay yeah, gotcha. yeah right uh, the, the waves can have different fre- frequencies so different wavelengths frequency mm. stuff like that right uh, so when you're awake, it's like super chaotic. It's just like everything's just kind of firing mm-hmm. everywhere. Uh, when you're in deep and REM sleep, it's like very cohesive. It's like one giant wave. There's no like a lot of movements everywhere. It's just oh. your whole brain is just saying the same thing. Kind of thing. Uh, but I mean, on, the, on that graph, it looks exactly the same. 
Yeah, so... Oh, oh, sorry. In REM sleep versus awake. Yeah, so sleep. awake is chaotic and your uh, NREM sleep is, is big super waves. big waves gotcha. and everything is like cohesive. Your brain's like one unit at that moment. Uh, and then in REM sleep, it's like super chaotic. It's just everywhere. Back, yeah. Uh, so that's that's how they kind of test it. Um, the, the other thing is like, if they, only, if they test only just your um, brain activity, they won't be able to tell the difference between awake and REM sleep. Mm. So that's why they need the muscle activity. They have to test your muscle because when you're in REM sleep, you're paralyzed. Sweet. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So it, are you paralyzed in deep? And Oh, in N REM sleep? In REM sleep. I know, but are you paralyzed in N REM uh, sleep? I think you, you can still have muscle twitches and stuff like that. But oh, like in, in REM sleep, like you literally cannot move. Yeah, yeah. So then how does your heart fucking pump blood? Well, like you're... Like conscious? Sorry. So okay, the muscles for you to like stay alive, like your heart and stuff, and your <laughs> diaphragm is still moving. Okay. But like your actual like arms and legs and stuff is completely paralyzed. Oh, it's like it's like a paralyzed person. A paralyzed person is still alive, yeah, yeah. Like but they just can't. They can't move their arms and legs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so that's the that's the main difference b- between the two. Uh, it's like the giant waves compared to the short waves. Um, and then just going back to here. Uh, it's still hard to wake up from like NREM sleep, but there's different stages, right? So in stage one and two, it's a bit lighter. And then stage three and four is like where it gets really deep. Um, so that's kind of like how they test it, right? Uh, so let's start talking about, I guess, some of the benefits of each. Uh, so pretty much the whole point of this is like, hey, why should we be sleeping this much? Uh, and and one of the main reasons is the benefits to it. So if you think about it, we sleep a third of our life. So mm. however long you live, you know, divide by three, that's how long you sleep in your entire life. So typically people are awake for 16 hours a day and sleep for eight hours mm. a day on on average. And if you're a, nor- a normal person. So like there has to be something good for it, right? Um, and there is, so first is memory. So whenever you're like awake and you're learning shit, it goes to your hippocampus. And if you guys know computers, it's like the RAM. Yeah. It's, it's where, you know, the random access memory, it's like very easy to get to and it's just there. Um, but it doesn't, uh, you don't actually mem- like actually remember in long-term memories until you go to sleep. Mm. So they've done tests where uh, a bunch of people, like they deprive them of sleep and then they test them on their, on their like textbook memory and the people who got deprived got like fucked. Like they're, they're, I think it was like, they're 50% worse than for the people term. who, yeah, for, mm-hmm. for long-term memory. Um, so pretty, pretty much like even I think 90 minute naps and stuff are pretty good for this, but in general, it's, it's what helps you, um, take all this memory from your hippocampus and turns it and brings it to like the back of your brain where so it gets stored. You remember when we first talked about the first podcast about sleeping where yeah. you said, um, like sleep is where you like learn like your muscle m- yeah. memory and like all that stuff too. Yeah. Would this be the same uh yeah part so, where you learn it? Or would it be Yeah, yeah. It's 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 pretty similar. Uh so that's in more so deep sleep also. Like REM sleep? Uh no, deep sleep is like the stage three, stage four and okay, REM. Okay. Yeah. Uh so pretty much this one is you take just your ram and you put it into your hard drive and that's what sleep helps you with so if you don't do it like if you're if you're trying to remember shit you're without sleep it's 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 not going to transfer properly uh and and they've done tests for this so like you know control group and non non control group and stuff um but also part of it is um it's like between stages too. So NREM sleep stage two sleep spindles. So that's that's where that's kind of like uh, it's kind of like a burst of brainwave activity between sleep cycles, and that's where some of this stuff gets transferred through. Mm. Um, but for learning itself, and I kind of put this for like m- for for motor skills, um, it turns like stuff you learn into like a conscious uh, into a like a unconscious habit, thing habit, yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah so so for this part it's uh it's it's kind of what i told you before where they slow down a sequence so i think i think the experiment they did is they had a piano and they got a bunch of people to play this like this this note and stuff like that right and then um they they also put probes and stuff in their head to see what they're actually doing i think what they could see is that when you are practicing a probe you'll do like 
three nodes skip, three nodes skip, three nodes skip. And then when you're actually uh, sleeping, it replays that, but it goes slow mo and also syncs it all together. Mm. Oh, cool. So that it makes it more like fluid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why, like, sometimes when you like learn something and then you sleep, you actually reinforce that learning further. Mm. Um, but yeah, so like that deep and REM sleep is better for like textbook memory type of stuff. Like you just learn a lot of shit and then you also get this uh, motor skill ad advantage too. Um, and, and also, like I said, even short naps during the day help. And that's, that's I guess, one thing we kind of glossed over is like people nowadays typically sleep like a monophasic way. So we sleep once per, per day. But it's actually pretty normal back in the day to sleep uh, during the evening and then have a nap like midday-ish, like a little bit in the early afternoon. Don't a lot of people in European culture promote biphasic sleeping? Uh, I think it's more of a Spanish thing because it's a siesta thing. Uh, and then in Asia, they do it a lot too. And why? Because uh, they can, I guess. It's better for yeah. you too. Like, so like, do you sleep less than eight hours at night and then you chunk it into like, or is it? Uh, I mean, they'll never recommend not to sleep seven to nine hours. But like then, total though, right? Yeah. So like if you do four hours and then four hours or like no, six no, no. hours and two um, hours? So that nap portion is usually only about 90 minutes. So max. if you take a nap and then like your regular chunk of sleeping, is that considered biphasic sleep? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And it's pretty normal. I think in Asian, Asian countries, it's just because it's way too hot. Yeah. In the afternoon, right? And they also do that with work. They yeah. split work into like mornings and evenings. Yeah, yeah. So like the, they'll work from like 8 a.m. to like 6 or 7 p.m. But then they'll have like a one or two hour break in between just to like nap and stuff. Mm -hmm. Which is pretty chilled. I mean, I personally would like a fucking nap time during. I know. Work. Sometimes I eat lunch and I'm like, oh my God, I'm going out. Yeah. You know, I always actually, I always take a lunchtime nap. So then whenever I go to the office, I'm like, guys, I'm fucking, <laughs> my body's ready to go to like take a nap. But. Yeah, that's yikes. Ugh. But yeah, um, so I think they, they did one test and just purely going back to the memory part um, or learning and stuff, it, it's like 20 to 40 percent better if you were to sleep compared to staying awake. Uh, and this is just them doing tests on people like they pretty much a lot of these tests in general is they'll make them do a bunch of tests. They'll sleep deprive one group and then they'll let another group sleep and then they'll do the same test like the next day or the next couple days later and then they'll, they'll just come they'll com compare the two right mm -hmm. and if you have a large enough sample size you can kind of say yeah that's pretty accurate and stuff um so yeah uh uh and then i was gonna say another one had a I'm just trying to read up on the study right now of what other studies they did, but uh, I don't think there was much other than that. Uh, one weird thing they did find out from some of these testing is that for some reason, if you rock the bed, you get like a more deeper end REM sleep. <laughs> what? <laughs> Not like sex, but like like if your bed's physically swaying like a cradle, uh, for some reason that like enhances your deep sleep even further. Interesting. Yeah, I was like, I, I put that down as a fun fact as a random one. Hmm. <laughs> I need some help getting some deep sleep, guys. <laughs> I mean, I don't think they do. I, I wonder if that's why water bed used to be a cool thing. It felt weird. Have you ever slept on a water bed before? I have it's not. very weird. It yeah. hurts my back. Oh, really? I I feel like it hurts my back. Yeah, you don't feel stable, right? Yeah. Like sometimes, okay, and this might be me. Like growing up, um, like I used the same mattress for like a big part of my teenage years, and that mattress was kind of like passed on from like my parents from like a long fucking time ago so like they tell you to like replace your mattress like before like every 10 years or something like that yeah, right? yeah. um so anyways this like this mattress that i've been using when i was a kid was like super super old and then i always like sleep in the same spot and then at one point like near the edge of like i always sleep near the edge of my bed i don't know why but then at one point like it started kind of like slanting and then i swear it started like fucking up my sleep because like <laughs> i it wasn't fully yeah. stable and then yeah like so that's also why like i feel like the water bed wasn't really stable and that's why i like feel like it was so uncomfortable and like it hurts to sleep on a water bed i get what you mean at my grandparents house there was a bed i would sleep on a lot but then the uneven part would be right in the middle 
Oh. And I would love that because I felt like a little nest like and everything. Yeah. Bit, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. So some stats I want to throw out there again. I, I think because a lot of our friends play volleyball, but this again goes back to the whole let's say let's call it muscle memory thing. Mm -hmm. It's not really muscle like your muscle doesn't memorize anything, but when stuff becomes unconscious, unconscious, it like becomes smoother, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so what they did is they took a bunch of right-handed people. They played a sequence with their left hand on, on the piano. So both group got to practice this for 12 minutes, okay? Uh, one group stayed awake for 12 hours, then performed the sequence. Another group slept for 12 hours, then performed the, the sequence. So pretty much one got, you know, tested in the, uh, pr practice in the morning, and then in the evening they, they tested it. And then another group practiced in the evening and then went to bed and then practiced it the next morning, right? Uh, the group that slept had 20% increase in performance speed. So that means they're playing it 20% faster. Um, and they also have 35% increase in performance accuracy. So they're actually hitting the right notes at 35% uh, better. Um, and then they said that they tried it with long sequence, with short sequence, and with either hands. And it's the, pretty much the same thing. They're, they're saying it's not related to the hands and it's not related to the length of, of, the, of the sequence. It's just related to sleeping and not sleeping. Damn. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so, and then again, it goes back to like, hey, well, while you practice it, you practice like three notes, three notes, three notes. But then when they actually played it after they slept, it's like one smooth uh, transition. So, yeah. Uh, and again, so they're saying that this comes from stage two and REM sleep. So it's like, uh, so they kind of talk about spindles a bit in this and it gets kind of like more theoretical and stuff. Not not theoretical, but a bit more scientific. Wait, what's a spindle? Uh, so like between stage two sleep, I think like, if there's like a brainwave that comes from the up and then comes down on the wave spectrum, oh. the spindle has like a bunch of like weird little um, vib vib oh, vibrations it's, it's that like come down. Describe a wave. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what kind of show. And apparently if they can figure out how many spindles you get, they can figure out how well you, how well you would be at performing this thing. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, and then, so then they also did like a crazy meta analysis. So they're saying that if you don't sleep enough, you get 10 to 30% faster to, um, or you significantly reduce by 10 to 30% your muscle strength. Uh, you increase your lactic acid buildup, uh, reduction in blood oxy oxygen saturation, um, and you have a higher risk of injury. So pretty much what meta-analysis is, they just took a bunch of other analysis that did a bunch of stuff. So they took like 750 other studies and they just summarized what these studies are all saying. Hmm. Interesting. Um, so I don't know, like that's, I guess one of the theme of the book they're saying is like, don't take like steroids and stuff. If you can get 10 to 30% enhanced in performance, it could be from sleep instead of just roids. Cause like if you, if you told like, if you told an athlete, you could get 10 to 30% enhanced uh, performance, that's the same as like, or that's better than how steroids would work for mm. them. Do you know what the percentage is for steroids? No, I have no idea. But like that's a significant one, especially at that level, uh, like pro athletes and stuff. But then they would just do both, right? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> to be perfectly fair, probably. Um, but yeah, I think like a lot of like teams, like professional teams, actually hire like sleep doctors and now and stuff for their for their players Whoa. to make sure they get optimal sleep and stuff. Um, but yeah, it also helps with like uh, physical recovery from inflammation. Uh, helps with like muscle repair and stuff like that. I mean, I think it's it's a in the workout community. It's a big thing, right? They all say like, "Hey, you know, you have to rest and mm -hmm. sleep and stuff." That's what I think. Actually, I don't know what you guys hear from that stuff. No, def definitely, yeah, yeah. Like it's it's always about you know the actual workout. They always talk about diet, but then they also talk about like getting enough rest and sleep itself. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Like for me, like after a hard workout, hard climb, I usually nap after. Uh, like I just like immediately after. No, not immediately after, but like. Like I'll have a meal and stuff and then I'll feel so physically drained that I'm just like, fuck, I'm just gonna take a little nap and stuff. Mm, yeah. Sometimes I feel like I have too much uh, adrenaline or like excitement after I finish. Like doing right it. right after, yeah. yes. But like an hour after, like after you eat and after your core body temperature also cools down, it's like a very natural thing to do. Oh yeah, it feels really nice. Sometimes yeah. I sit in my car and I just chill there. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. it feels really nice. Um, okay, so uh, what's the sleep and focus thing? Uh, okay, let's just talk about sleep and I guess it's related to the sleep and deprivation. So some scary facts. Uh, so stats from AAA, so they're the car whatever thing in, in the States. Uh, if you have less than five hours of sleep, you risk your risk of car crashes increased by three times. 
at four hours of sleep, your risk of car crash is 11.5 times. So it's like exponential. It's not like the less sleep you have, just just worse it is. It's ex exponentially worse. Um, and then I think I think I've said this before, but like drowsy sleep is worse. I think there's more accident caused from drowsy sleeping than drunk driving and driving on drugs combined. Wait, drowsy sleeping or drowsy driving? Oh, sorry, drowsy drowsy like, driving. What? Yeah, there's more accidents from drowsy driving than from drunk driving and driving on drugs combined. Um, so it's kind of like, you know, the people who are like mad to do the, the mothers, you know, they, they should also yeah, focus on that shit. Yeah. yeah. Cause uh, I don't know, like what's your experiences on like getting to that? I feel like I've had some times where I thought I could keep going or like, I think I can keep going and I push through, but apparently that's, that's something also in our brain like where it's with like drowsy driving. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 yeah it's yeah it's pretty bad actually i feel like um like well number one is that like when you're actually falling asleep yeah right sometimes like it's like you're almost like asleep at the wheel yeah. i've had times where like i'm driving and then all of a sudden i'm like oh shit like how did i get from point <laughs> a to point b and I'm like like there's scary. like a lapse in my like memory or like yeah. there's a point where like i fell asleep yeah like for a little bit and then i'm just like oh shit like either i just didn't remember driving there or like i shut my eyes and just like those little right yeah, yeah. so yeah i feel like that's pretty uh it's i mean different. fuck i feel like so that's happened to me before and then when i actually think about it, i was like fuck i'm lucky nothing actually happened right. in that time yeah. it gets so scary so like the reason why they say it's worse is because when you it's called micro sleeping when mm. you're driving you just close your eyes for like one or two seconds so you're like kind of like unconscious for like one or two seconds and then you're and then you're back in uh but it's worse than drunk driving because like you don't have any reaction time like yeah. like it's, it's more severe because like when you're drunk you have a delayed reaction time like you see a car in front and you're like oh shit brake and but you're not thinking fast enough and you break too late and then you slam into them mm -hmm. with like drowsy sleeping you slam in them without breaking like mm -hmm. you're just going full 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 force yeah but and also like it could also be like when you're drowsy driving that you're just not driving and then like you it could just be like you like your hand is just not controlling the wheel anymore or like whatever too right or it's yeah. like drunk driving at least like something's there yeah yeah and then so they, they they did like a simulation test so if you're 19 hours sleep deprived you drive similar or you perform the same as someone who's legally drunk so pretty much if you for some reason had to wake up at 4 a.m for work or whatever uh and then you had to stay till midnight to finish whatever work there's some crazy deadline uh you're now 19 hours awake the whole time and then you have to drive home All right just just giving an example out there of like why this occurs at, at least like I, i'm not sure about you guys but I, I i can see from like the u.s work culture or like some more intense work culture that that's like a very common thing mm. like drunk uh, drowsy driving yeah, okay. yeah yeah i've read before that um, sometimes you don't remember when you how to get from how you got from point A to point B is because you've gone that route route so many times that it's unconscious that you unco just yeah it's un unconscious or your brain has remembered that route so well that your brain no longer needs to actively remember how to get like there anymore. So it's right? yeah, it's like yeah. it's literally autopilot to save brain space. But I've definitely uh, kind of like closed my eyes for a few seconds on the road before, and I was like, holy shit, and I would like slap myself or like roll down the windows and instantly get up bunch of wind and i'm like wake the fuck up here. i'm gonna die <laughs> i think it wasn't until this book that uh i actually like was more conscious about this so i think uh not recently but during covid i had a trip to ontario and i drove from toronto to ottawa like right after a flight mm -hmm. uh and then like halfway i was like telling joyce I was, like, okay i'm actually gonna take a half pull an hour over, break right. and pull over yeah, and shit yeah. i was like before i would try to like muscle through this and stuff yeah yeah but fun. it wasn't until this book i was like okay you know what i think think this is like way better than yeah even even half an hour like yeah right like you feel much more alert i think yeah yeah, yeah. and it, it depends like so what what they recommend is like um take kind of a nap and or like you know rest a bit but like don't like drive right after like like wake up and then like you know drink some coffee or some water or something mm -hmm. like get your like brain back to the same state like of, of yeah. yeah and then and then you you you, you start driving um so yeah that's kind of the scary thing to it uh i don't know like i haven't heard of that many stories but i have heard of some where it's like uh one of my friends told me is like yeah he fell asleep on the wheel and the car like flipped over and shit yeah, and, like, yeah. well it's, i think it's i think it's just hard to prove that right like yeah. if for drunk driving 
like when something happens then like you know you can still have alcohol in your system or like drugs or whatever whereas like if you're just sleep deprived you know like yeah they can't really test them because like i feel like your adrenaline would be so high after an accident and stuff that like yeah you can't like, prove that you were drowsy or anything yeah, like yeah, that, yeah. Right? and there's no like i mean not right now in the mm-hmm. future there there might be um with like other technology and stuff they could prove that someone was drowsy driving because at that point i feel like they'd be pretty liable right like it'd be just as liable as a as drunk driver I, like in my opinion if i was an insurance company i'd be very motivated to figure out to try to figure out technology to see if someone was drowsy drowsy driving, driving. because then i could not like pay for the claims right it's like right. If, if you get an accident and you're drunk driving then you like it's it's it's, it's on you pretty mm-hmm. much right um I don't know. Personally, but drunk, drunk driving or drowsy driving? Uh, drunk, drunk driving. Oh yeah. But if if I was an insurance company, I would try to find out how can I figure out if this person was drowsy driving because mm-hmm. if it is, then I can somehow convince, like a jury of court or whatever, or just somehow in some rule book say like, hey, if you're drowsy driving, we don't cover that, right? That's your fault for t- taking taking that risk, right? And then we're we're also not going to pay this claim. It's actually in the in the like driving handbook that like if you're tired, you need to pull over. Or, yeah. Like, right over, but. Yeah. Uh so yeah, that's 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 a bit of it. Um one one part too is that they're saying that a bit of sleeping also helps you forget shit. So like you know how when I said um your short term memory is the hippocampus and stuff gets transferred to your uh uh to your whatever cortex to actually store the, the memory. Uh sleeping can also help you forget some stuff. So like if your RAM is full of shit, that's when your computer starts to lag, right? Mm. Uh, so sleep also helps you like clear clear your, clear your RAM out, so the next day you can learn more shit, like or you can like intake. So stuff. does this clear your short term memory? Uh, y- yes. Because like long term memory is like yeah is there. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean there are ways to get rid of long term memory and stuff too, but, but not like through sleep. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's also when I read this yesterday or two days ago that when your brain is firing up between its neurons and it also creates byproducts byproduct waste in your brain and in order to get rid of that byproduct waste is sleep so yeah it's literally like the shit of your brain yeah so I, that's actually the next part actually i can just talk about this now um so so it's not like so this is kind of like one of the fucking weird ones uh, i'm trying to find it uh, um so it's with alzheimer's disease so as your as you think throughout the day uh, supposedly some amyloids get formed in your brain and then when you sleep uh oh so anyways these things eventually will cause plaques and then they suspect these plaques cause um all alzheimer's and all oh. stuff uh, it's not like so okay the one problem with this is also there's this one study about beta a- amyloid and i think it was just three years ago that they found out that this study was uh disproven because they found out that the person who like posted the study doctored the the photos and then that was 10 years ago and all these companies made drugs just to r- reduce beta amyloid but they're now they're not even sure if beta amyloid is the cause of alzheimer's and all this stuff but r- regardless of the fact some form of amyloid is maybe not beta amyloid itself but some form of this is uh and what they found out is that as you as you're awake and stuff you have um this toxin as viv, viv was speaking about and then uh when you sleep your the space between your neurons pretty much shrink or no this the the neurons itself shrink a little so there's more space between neurons and then your spinal fluid comes in and washes all the shit out um and so this only happens in nrem deep sleep so people who don't get that deep sleep they suspect that's what or those are the people are more likely to get alzheimer's and all these dementia disease in the future because like it builds up over time and stuff holy Mm. fuck i may have you might have Alzheimer's. <laughs> yeah. I mean, a part of it is genetics, but part of it they think is also like caused. Like it's caused from people from actually. Bad habits. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Oh, shit. Uh, so like for me, that was one of the scariest things because like in my life, I feel like that's one of the scariest diseases. Uh, Alzheimer's. Yeah. And dementia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those type of things. Because like I see like I've seen like old people. I've worked at like senior centers and stuff, and it's just so sad. It's just like. Yeah, they're not functioning anymore, right? Yeah, like yeah, it's yeah. definitely something, something in the world or in human reality that wasn't supposed to be the case. Like at some point, that person should have died in like the real world. Mm. If, if if that kind of makes sense, yeah. Like they're not functioning as a as a human anymore. Oh yeah. Right? yeah. Um. But yeah, 
That's uh, that is one of the case. Uh, sleep and Alzheimer's and stuff. Wait, can I ask you something? Can you yeah. go back to the other slide? Sleep and focus. Sure. Yeah. So lack of sleep can cause major emotional swings on the negative side, cause depression. So what? And then on the last one, you wrote on the positive side can cause addictions. Yeah. Uh, so let me find. Is that. addiction positive or like what? Uh, sorry. I also have like a different write up on that too. Yeah. So, uh, pretty much. It causes your emotions to swing a lot, and apparently, I I don't know all the science to this. When your emotion swings a lot, especially to the positive side, you become more impulsive. Uh, you go for like the more addictive stuff because you get more impulsivity. Uh, so what they did is they studied two groups with a hundred pictures with varying emotional content. Uh, the group that was sleep deprived had a sixty percent increase in their amygdala response to these emotional content. Um. So like this amygdala is also responsible for our anger, rage, and also our fight, fight or flight response. So pretty much it's saying like you have more instinctual um, work to it instead of using your pre prefrontal cortex, which is more logical and rational. So like no normally your brain uses both, right? But your your prefrontal cortex say like, hey, don't don't jump off that bridge, right? Like it's like the logic side, whereas your amygdala is just telling you very not random stuff, but giving you like fight or flight shit, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and it's more of the em emotional side. Mm. Um, yeah, so they're, they're saying that this is, uh, th this correlation, it could cause, because, you know, so, so some people might think like going on the good side or the, the or pretty much what they're saying is being more emotionally sensitive is not good because one, you're, mo you're more likely to have a cause of like de depression and stuff. And like the sad side of it, but then when you go too far on the other side, you you become more in, more in, impulsive. So like if you swing too high or low one way or the other, it's it's not it's apparently not good. So if you get a lot of sleep, you become more impulsive. You get too little. Oh okay. Yeah. When you lack sleep, you become more emotional. When you uh, lack sleep, you become more emotional. Yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah, you have more major emotional swings. Sorry. Oh. Um. It makes sense because you're more on edge, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. And you're more on edge because your fight or flight uh, system is more is is pretty much firing up a lot more. Interesting. Yeah, and then okay, so another thing they they were trying to test is like what is considered a lack of sleep, right? So like when when you say lack of sleep, people are like thinking like okay, you're sleep deprived for X amount of time, right? Uh, so they did like a response time test with uh, with with people that have X amount of um, lack uh, or however long they lack sleep right so first their, their control group was uh 14 days of normal sleep so eight eight hours a night and then they just did like a re response time just just a basic like thing uh and then one group group two or okay let's say one of the groups they only had s six only, sorry one group only had four hours of sleep every night um after six days, they had the same results as someone who was sleep deprived for one whole day. That means if you sleep four hours every night for like a week, you're pretty much like your brain state's the same as someone who's like stayed awake for 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 an entire night. Mm. Oh, um, if you sleep only six hours a night after ten days, your brain like your response time is the same as someone who stayed awake for an, an entire day. Uh, so it, it's kind of crazy because a lot oh. of people sleep only six hours a night, right? And if you do that for like two weeks, your brain's pretty much in the same state as someone who's po put an all night in, 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 in terms of reaction time. Oh, right? interesting. So like purely reaction time. Um, it says a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it says a lot sometimes. The, the other thing is that, so all these days I was talking about, uh, talking to you about after three days of sleep recovery so it's like sleeping normal for three nights they still didn't reach their baseline yet so it takes like long like pretty much one you can't really catch up on sleep as people say um but even if you try to catch up on sleep it's not as simple as just sleeping more on saturday and sunday it's like diminishing yeah yeah, yeah. um like you basically only time can kind of like reset yeah the baseline yeah yeah that makes yeah sense. So yeah, again, so like I'm not saying this is the same for everything, but when they test response time, so let's say your volleyball response time or something like that, that's that's how it could correlate, right? Um, Should I need to sleep more? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, 
this is, this is the first step, right? <laughs> it's just just educating yourself on this stuff. Uh, so most of the stuff is for the brain. Um, I think they did another test where they just tested about learning stuff. And when you're sleep deprived, you're 40% deficit compared to someone that's fully rested. So just about learning things. Um, I think the test was kind of weird too, because they like a lot of these tests, they do a lot of ra- not random stuff, but they try to make sure it's not related to you just being sleep deprived. So what they'll do is, um, they'll have two groups. Both of them will learn. One group will sleep normally for like three days, and then they'll test them on the thing they they taught them. Then the next group, they'll learn something. They'll sleep deprive them for one night. Then they'll let them have two nights of normal sleep. So like you can't blame the sleep, or you can't like think that it's just because of the like you being awake is what's making you uh like not re re mm-hmm. recall what you learn. Um. But then after those two days, they still lost 40% of, of, of what they actually learned. Interesting. Yeah. So like they, uh, like pretty much what I'm trying to say is like the book talks a lot about, uh, a lot about different studies and they go into details of all these studies and a lot of the studies, they try to like make it as fair as possible, or they try to even give the advantage to the sleep deprived a bit just to see exactly how bad it actually is. I just feel like, okay, so this is my, this is like what like i'm kind of starting to kind of understand well and so like number one is i think like like physically when you don't get enough sleep like physically you just don't feel 100 percent right and obviously like when you're not as alert you don't feel you don't have as much energy right like yeah i just feel like overall you're just like less kind of primed to like do your best or perform the best right and that could be like and like maybe that's like, like exactly what you're saying with like oh thirty percent physical exhaustion like yeah, whatever yeah. right like so 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 far all the stuff I've other than a little bit of the motor skills most of the stuff I talked about is mostly to do with the brain mm-hmm. it's just sleeping and the brain I haven't even gotten to like the actual physical side of what sleep does to your body like actually to your like, like your veins and your arteries and your organs and shit uh, but so far everything I've just talked about is just the effects it has on on like your brain your mood and things your brain connects to like your your brain connection to your muscles right but then like like to me like that almost feels like it like well your brain obviously links to like your physical like whatever right but i guess your physical also includes like the shape or like the condition of your muscles and like all that stuff too yeah but like don't you think don't you think that like because your body is physically tired that your brain kind of like limits uh, like it's, the output, yeah, yeah, like it's, mentally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 definitely both. Um, but like, they can't just say that because you could get physically exhausted from working out. Yeah, and then like that's not technically the same. Like you could physically exhaust your body still, right? But a lot of these studies, they just want to purely make it mental. Like how how mm. how does your mentality, your brain function change with lack of sleep? Uh, but then in this next section, they have a bunch on your actual physical health. Uh, so one is your cardiovascular health. Uh, so I think they did this weird test where they tracked a bunch of like over half a million people. And pretty much what they kind of trended is that progressively shorter sleep was associated to 45% increase in dying from coronary heart disease. So that's like heart attacks, strokes, and things like that. Um, they also did this random study with like 4,000 Japanese male. Don't, I don't know why they specifically picked that. I'm, I'm assuming it's a Japanese researcher. Uh, they tracked them over 14 years and they showed that sleeping less than six hours had four to five X of suffering a one or more cardiac arrest. Oh shit. So this is over like four, over, over 14 years, but like, I guess that's a little bit limited cause that's like Japanese, like some critics will say, oh, that's only Genetics Japanese male and all that shit. Yeah. But uh, there was still another study that did like over half a million. Um, and I assume they try to like standardize all these studies quite a bit. Like they try to standardize with like age and with like, uh, like if you're a smoker and on all this stuff. Um, so they do do that. Um, but pretty much what happens here is it goes back to your sympathetic nervous system. So that's like your fight or flight response. Uh, when you sleep, your sympathetic nervous system actually gets a time to rest. Um, so like, 
normally if you're in a relatively relaxed state, your sympathetic nervous system isn't like that intense. Mm. Um, but when you're in like deep sleep, it gets even more relaxed. So like right now, like I'm not really nervous when you guys are going to punch me in the face. Like the chance of it is like (laughs) the chance of it is like one percent, right? So therefore my sympathetic nervous system isn't that like worked up, right? Mm -hmm. For example, if I was like, I don't know, downtown Edmonton at like, you know, midnight or something like that with a lot of like random ho- like hobos or homeless people around me, then my sim- my sympathetic nervous system is a bit more uh, worked up, right? Because mm-hmm. I have like a fight or flight response. Um, the thing about lacking sleep is that when you don't get into that deep NREM sleep, your sympathetic nervous system never actually calms down. Uh, I feel like it, and I, I don't know this like 100%, but like, I think is it they're like inversely related between your sympathetic and your parasympathetic, right? Like sympathetic is like your fight or flight. And then the parasympathetic is when your body relaxes. So then like when one is like higher, the other one yeah. goes lower, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. And then the, the one with sympathetic uh, nervous system, it like controls your heart rate and your blood pressure and all that stuff like that. Right. Um, and it also has, uh, or it also relates to your cortisol. Um, release right so that, mm-hmm. that that's the stress, stress hormone, hormone and stuff that gets you going and stuff like that right uh, when you don't get deep NREM sleep your heart rate's higher and your blood pressure is higher and your cortisol is less regulated uh, what that makes what that causes your blood vessels doesn't actually get a chance to repair itself um, so when it's always in like high pressure it's like starting to get damaged and starting to wear when you get deep NREM sleep it'll actually lower the pressure and then it can actually go in and heal uh, certain parts of it uh, when you don't get enough deep and run sleep. So for example, if, for some reason, if you lack that portion of the sleep or you're not getting enough sleep, uh, you don't actually get that repair in your body because, mm. because there's like your baseline, there's like super stress and then there's the low side. Yeah. So as you sleep, you like maybe tr- like transfer a bit to the low side and, and you kind of like, it's, it's, it's kind of like a wave, but when you don't have that sleep, your baseline is now higher mm. and it's closer to more stress. And then your peak also gets higher because everything's starting to get damaged. Right. Uh, so that's kind of one of, and that's kind of general, like a lot of the physical side of well, how body about lactic acid too. Right. Cause I feel like for the, yeah. for like your muscles and stuff, lactic acid is also yes pretty yeah. much like the equivalent. Yeah. And then without, without sleep, you can't really, um, get that, get that out, uh, out of your body. Right. So one of them is just on the cardiovascular side. Um, I think one thing they, I think this, I'm not sure how random this is, but they always say like daylight savings in spring when you lose an hour of sleep, there's more hospital visits, uh, oh, more, more, <laughs> more heart attacks. Cause you lose an hour of sleep. Cause you lose an hour of sleep. And then the inverse is true on in November when we get the extra hour of sleep, they have less visits relative to the the baseline interesting maybe it's also cold outside people don't want to go yeah, <laughs> i mean it's not that bad <laughs> maybe uh it, it could be anecdotal too right like you know how like some people say when the moon's full and like oh, there's yeah. more hospital visits and all that shit mercury uh, retrograde yeah all that shit I, i'm not sure how intense they fucking uh tested that but yeah uh next one is met- i guess not related to this slide is uh metabolism so they did a study where sleeping four hours for six night six nights caused patients to be forty percent less effective at absorbing glucose. That means if you're forty percent less effective at glucose, you're pretty much pre diabetic. So I think what 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 they did in this study is that they took um, athletes like like trained guys and they sleep deprived them for six nights. And then if you were to test them and show them the results to a doctor without them actually seeing who the person was, the doctor would start prescribing shit to like treat the pre-diabetes. Whoa. Yeah. Um, pretty much when you lack sleep, there's less insulin release and the cells themselves become un- unresponsive to, to insulin. Um, again, this goes back to cortisol. I think because you're in a more stressful state, your body wants more blood in the sugar. So if it needs to use it to like fight something, it can activate that or it can access that sugar more. But that's normal if you're in a fight or flight state. If you're not in a fight or flight state and that stay at stays at a high level, your body gets used to having more sugar in your blood and then your cell starts to not absorb it as as normally. All right, yeah. So then that causes diabetes. Like I, I like it. Uh, I think it's pre- it's it's it's, pre- it's pretty logical, right? Like mm-hmm. if you want to fight something, your body's like saying, "Okay, uh, you know, fat in the cells start producing all these glucose. Let me get ready to use as much energy as I can." How do you think this relates to people who have a sweet tooth? I don't think it does. Not um, at all, because like every day I have like 
two periods in the day where I'm like, I want. So dessert. I don't think diabetes <laughs> causes you to want more uh, sugary I like foods. Sleep and sleep and like the lack of. So it could be sleep. your mood swing that causes you to want to be more impulsive uh, when you're when you lack sleep. I don't think diabetes makes you want to eat more sugary things. So what, what about what about like stress eating, like increasing cortisol? Well, actually, I don't know like what causes stress eating, but definitely it seems like it's a common thing, right, for people to stress eat. Yeah. So you think it's like related to like the higher cortisol levels making you want to eat more? Uh, it, so it is related to sleep. So when you lack sleep, so if you, I think they did one study where they slept four to five hours. There's decrease of leptin hormone in their body, so leptin makes you feel full. And then there's increase of uh, ghrelin hormone, which makes you feel hungry. So when you lack sleep, you actually get like you have more hormones to feel hungrier and you have less hormones that make you feel full. Uh, so I think what they did in this study is they had a group again, you know, control group and then the, the normal group, the group that was uh, or sorry, the, the, the group that lacked sleep, the group that lacked sleep ate 300 calories more each day compared to the control group. I, I think they did some like um, buffet type of thing. And then not only did they eat more calories, they also ate less healthy foods. So like they ate more of the donuts and the high fat, high sugar foods. Interesting. The donuts, hey. yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So, so there is a, there is a, like a, a call, no, I guess not exact causal, but there is something like that. So I think what they did in the study is they did four to five hours and if you equate that to 300 calories more each day, you would gain about 10 to 15 pounds per year. Damn. Damn. Uh, just, <laughs> just from lack of sleep. Um, also, when you lack sleep, you have increase of endocannabinoids. Uh, so that's the thing that makes you feel the munchies and makes you crave for higher sugar, higher carb food. So like pretty much lack of sleep causes less of feeling full, more of feeling hungry, and more of feeling hungry for shitty food. Uh, that's kind of like the combination of things. Um, and then they also said with that, with the mood swing also, you're more impulsive too. So you're less willing to say, hey, I'll just eat that celery. You're more willing to be like, fuck it, I'll eat that 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 donut or that fried chicken or, or something like that. Interesting, donuts and fried chicken, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Seems like a pretty relevant examples here. Yes, yes. Uh, and then also the... The other thing that happens is that um, the increase in cortisol when you're in this fight or flight response, it actually starts to fuck with your microbiome. Uh, so it allows like bad bacteria start to form in your stomach and shit. And then you're more likely to get fucked up from that. Um, and then, yeah, they also did this whole weight loss thing where they just tried pretty much two groups. They work out the same. I think their their calorie intake was the same, but their sleep were different. And then the group that slept properly the weight they lost was half of it was from body fat. And then the group that lacks sleep, the weight they lost, 70% of that was lean body mass. So they pretty much lost a lot of their their, their muscles and stuff like that. Um, yeah, so... So go to sleep, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's important if you want to lose weight because you want to lose the right weight, right? Because as soon as you start losing lean body mass, then it's harder to lose more weight. Yeah, because like yeah. muscle... Met- like metabolizes yeah, more calories. Yeah. Like you having bigger muscles, you have to work out less to burn the same amount of calories, yeah. right? Uh, so that is the nice part. Uh, so outside of like your cardiovascular health, outside of your obesity and all that shit and eating, um, the next one is reproductive. So they did a quick study. It's pretty simple. Less sleep equals less testosterone. So that makes you lower sperm count, smaller testes, more tired, um, lower libido, lower bone density, and lower muscle mass. So those are all directly tied into your tes- testosterone. Um, they Pretty much they, they did this other study where they got a group of men. One group had five hours of sleep. The other group had the same baseline level. Um, and they tested their sperm count and they had uh, 29% lower sperm count with more sperm having d- uh, deformities and smaller testicles. Um, and I think they did the same with females and there was a higher 33% higher rate of abnormal menstrual cycle and 80% more likely to suffer from subfertility that reduce the ability to get pregnant. Um, I mean, it speaks for itself. Less, less testosterone for guys is pretty shit. So, mm. 
I, th- I think that's pretty much why a lot of like the bodybuilding stuff always say, you know, get enough sleep and shit because it's a direct correlation with, uh, with getting more testosterone, which is always what you want when you're gaining. Um, let's see. There was, oh, one thing I glossed over. Uh, there was a correlation between less sleep and higher obesity. So, uh, in three year olds with 10.5 hours of sleep has 45% increased risk of being obese than with 12 hours of sleep. So even as like a child, this already starts to affect you. Damn. Yep. So that's why I got to let those babies sleep. I think kids, like babies sleep the most. I think it's like upwards of 14 to 16 hours. Mm. I'm sure like that. Um, so the next one I have for the physical effects. So pretty much what I'm trying to do right now is just build a case for like why you should sleep by giving you all the bad shit and a little bit of the good shit, but a lot of it is the bad stuff, unfortunately. Um, they did a really weird study for the immune system one. So what they did is they purposely got people sick. Uh, they pretty much got some type of virus and they shoved it up their nose. Uh, and then the group that lacked sleep were 50% or had a 50 Fifty percent higher chance of getting infection compared to eighteen percent chance uh, if you had seven plus hours of sleep. So pretty much, if I stuck a like a swab of virus up your nose, you may or may not get sick. Mm. If you lack sleep, you're you it, it, more it, likely. It, it, it's pretty much a coin toss, right? It's it's either heads or tails. You're either getting sick or you're not. Uh, but if you get seven plus hours of sleep, you're eighteen percent chance of actually fighting it off before you actually get sick. And then the other thing is this works even more with uh, getting vaccines. So when you get like a vaccine shot, if you lack sleep, you have, was it, uh, pretty much your body won't react to the vaccine properly. Um, it won't actually, it's, it's not that you'll get sick, but it won't build the proper antibodies for that. Uh, so pretty much if you were to lack sleep and you took a vaccine dose, you are pretty much fucking up that dose. Like that dose isn't going to do as much for you. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the last one is like the killer T cells or something or killer cells. There's like a natural killer cells that kill like malignant tumors. Like there's always tumors growing in you and shit. Uh, I don't know if you guys ever seen like a dead body, like a cadaver and shit. There's always like a lot of tumors and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, when you lack sleep, you decrease these tumor killing cells by 70%. Um, and then so if you have six hours or less of sleep, you have a 40% chance increase of developing cancer. Just, I think that's just very like high level fucking stats that they use. Um, so again, the reason, so like this is like what, like the results from their test, but the reason why they're going back to, it, they're saying that um, when you're in a more fight or flight response, your body's more inflamed. Mm-hmm. Uh, and when it's more inflamed, your, 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 uh, your natural killer cells doesn't actually kill the bad shit. And it also feeds the tumor cells more. Um, then that will damage the DNA of the cells around it, and then it'll cause it to like break apart. And then once your tumor, if it's if it's actually like uh, if, if it's if it's malignant, so but pretty much but benign tumors are tumors that don't do anything. Uh, malignant are the ones that actually do stuff. If that breaks apart from where it is, then it starts to spread, and then you're pretty much fucked from that point. Um, and then the last part on your physical body is your genes um it's pretty simple i don't think like it's very good correlation so pretty much what they test is that the uh, the telomeres of of your genes Uh, that's the thing i've talked to about before where like it shows you what your biological age is Uh, when you lack sleep your telomeres pretty much get fucked up uh so it pretty much shows that your body is aging um further than what it actually is when you when you lack sleep so pretty much that's the case that they've built in this book of like hey why should you sleep more um some things they've kind of randomly noted here is that uh, do you guys know power naps you guys you guys understand the term power naps yeah okay, uh, yeah well, well, explain explain it okay so okay there's the history of power nap so it's actually a commercial term so like uh i think the airlines were trying to test when was the best time to sleep uh, on a transatlantic flight to ensure that there's safer landings. So pretty much when pilots are flying across whatever ocean, uh, they get certain breaks and they get to sleep 
at that at those times. Like they have relief or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then the most dangerous time is uh the time when they land. So usually when you actually take off, you're you know fully awake. You just started work kind of thing. Yeah. You're you're fu- you're fully aware. Uh, but the most dangerous time is ninety minutes up to landing. So like ninety minutes before landing and then actually landing is the most dangerous time of the flight. Um, so then they found that if you take the twenty to thirty minute nap early on then uh you can you're more likely to decrease that that danger time uh but then why is that uh so pretty much they uh, they used to not get any uh but then they tested three different scenarios like taking this break uh close to landing in the middle or early on and they just found that hey early on is better like it's just better to take a nap during that time you're just more 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 focused um but then the like execs and stuff didn't like whatever terminology they gave so then they gave them the term power naps uh because it sounds more like military like like more like america right (laughs) and then uh a lot of people use that as like an excuse now which is not good like they use that excuse of like getting only four four hours of sleep they'll take like a power nap during the day but like that doesn't actually do much if you're only getting four hours of sleep during during the night uh so that's just one thing they glossed over they're like a a lot of apparently a lot of americans kind of use that as like a substitute for like getting actual proper sleep uh, but Power nap's supposed to be only fifteen minutes, right? Yeah, uh, 15, 20, 20, 20 to thirty yeah. minutes is is kind of what they put on there. Oh, I see. <laughs> I mean, it's not like a fucking coin thing. It's not like an exact thing. I think right? I think the it's supposed to be like you don't you don't want to get into REM sleep because that's what makes you most tired and groggy when you first wake up. So then you want to nap for only X amount of time. Yeah, so yeah. that you don't hit the REM sleep. Yeah, um, but it's a it's. It's weird too because like for that it's not even up to them. So like if you keep waking up very early, so if you're not a normal um early bird and you force yourself to wake up early, say like you normally should be sleeping to like 9 or 10 and you force yourself to wake up at 7, you lose the most REM sleep. Uh cuz sleep is not fair. It's not like you get like you get more sleep like at loaded, one time. It's loaded near the end of Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Like your REM sleep so then you're the more end. likely next time to sleep to get oh. even more REM sleep because it you're more de- deprived of that, right? So it's actually counterintuitive. Uh, also, uh, in the book, they also talked about this subvariant of a gene called BHLH E41. So that actually lets people sleep for six to six point five hours a night, and they function perfectly normal. Um, but the chances of getting this gene is super low. So it's like 008 percent chance of having this gene. There, there It'd are people out there with them. Huh? Yeah, I mean, if they could figure out this gene, I would fucking splice that shit and make it work for everyone. How can you test if you have this gene? Uh, you could do the ancestry or whatever shit, and then oh, really? one of the prerequisites yeah. is not to have your name as Viv. Oh man, <laughs> <laughs> I can actually check then. Uh, so okay. if you if you do any of those DNA tests, I think so. I don't know how it works now, but this is what I did before. So I you you do the DNA test. And you can request for the raw data and you take the raw data and you have to put it through a different um, like processing thing and it'll figure out all these genes for you. Mm-hmm. So like what Ancestry does is they just get the information they want in terms of like, hey, are you related to stuff or to, to someone? But they actually map your whole genome. So they actually, I, actually, I'm not sure if it's the whole, but they, they map a bunch of your genome and you can use that and you can put it through a different processor to find out what genes you have. Uh, mm-hmm. and it's actually quite cool I think it should be done for everyone because you can find if you're like more likely to get a certain cancer or if you're more likely to yeah. do a certain thing or or if you're more likely to um, have some superior or inferior genes of some sort uh, so yeah interesting I yeah. did a 23 in me thing I'm gonna see if I can find that yeah so I, I have it it's actually a quite a big like I, I think when I picked it up it was just a text file but it was a really big file like your your genome has i mean like to people in biology they're probably yeah that's obvious but it's actually quite a big big file so they have a lot of information there it's just that they have to use uh computer software to figure out what's what Mm -hmm. um and then i think nowadays they use ai for that shit too because ai can uh, ai can find these patterns a lot faster yeah um but yeah Pretty much you can run that through if you are curious. But the chances of you having this gene is the same chance of you getting struck by lightning. Uh, so there's no like, it's still pretty low fucking chance. There's a chance. 
There is a chance. Um, so most of what I talked about is mostly just and REM sleep too. It's not even the benefits of REM sleep yet. Uh, I might get into that on the next chapter be- or the next podcast because REM sleep is more related to dreams too. Uh, one thing I still want to talk about. Uh, so sorry guys, this might be like information overload. So I'll, I'll, I'll do a quick summary right now. Uh, if you don't, okay. If you are thinking about sleep, two main factors, there's the sleep pressure and the circadian rhythm. You can do a lot of shit and I'll get into what shit you can do to pretty much help you guys with that. But that's what causes you to sleep. If you don't get enough sleep, uh, I can just list out briefly and quickly all the shit. So you're going to be shittier at learning. Uh, you're going to be shittier at your short term memory. So you won't, your hippocampus will be clogged too much. Um, you're going to be shittier at learning like muscle memory related things. So like you'll be worse at sports. Um, you're more likely to get into car accidents. You're more emotionally irrational. Uh, you will be more forgetful and you'll be more tired. That's a bit more obvious. You're more likely to get Alzheimer's and dementia and all this other shit. Uh, you're more likely to get heart attacks, obesity, diabetes. Uh, you'll gain weight. Your reproductive system will be shit, so you won't be able to make babies and you'll have less testosterone. And your immune system will suck and your genes will start to die faster. That pretty much what happens if you don't get enough sleep. Um, I'm just going to go quickly jump into what to do to help you sleep. Uh so healthy sleep practices. So pretty much uh, the book has like a quick guideline of like what you can do to help. Uh, I think the biggest one they always say is like stick Don't nap after 3 p.m. <laughs> I mean, that's that's is that like that's who weird. naps before 3 p.m.? Well, I mm. personally don't trust the <laughs> 3 p.m. thing, but we'll, we'll just go from from top to bottom. So I think they, they list this out in uh, how important it is. So one is stick to a sleep schedule. So I think like the schedule is the most important and uh, you even changing a schedule for the weekend actually fucks up your week quite a bit because uh, you actually just, I mean, I feel like it, happen, it happens to me a lot where I say I'm going to sleep in on like a Saturday, uh, like a Saturday morning type of thing, but I wake up at my normal work time and I can't fall back asleep, mm. right? So like I just, like you just can't get that sleep again, right? Um, exercise is good, but not too late. So I think what, like exercise is good because it like, uh, has a lot of other hormonal effects, but if you do it too late, your core body temperature is too high. Um, it's supposed to be like a few hours before you want to sleep. Yeah, right? so like do it to like at latest two to three hours be- before you sleep, right? Oops. Uh, and that's just to drop <laughs> your your core body temperature because like th- that's the whole cir- circadian rhythm thing, right? Uh, it helps you uh, regulate that that body temperature. Uh, avoid caffeine and nicotine. Well, I mean, if you can't avoid it, take caffeine like earlier in the day because if you take it too late uh, it might still affect you Um, because that that affects the whole sleep pressure thing Uh, this is a big one for you guys avoid alcohol before bed (laughs) Um, so these are just like 12 random tips in the book so like we didn't go completely in the sequence of the book but in next week's episode we'll talk about alcohol and why it affects your uh, sleep but if you just want the basic information just avoid it before bed uh, it's not good. It doesn't actually help you fall asleep. It's not like real sleep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, avoid large meals and beverage before bed. So the beverage one is so you don't wake up and pee. Uh, that fucks up your sleep a lot, uh, apparently. Oh. Yeah. Uh, and then large meals is just because you you get too warm. Uh, your your core your core body temperature is too high. Uh, avoid medicines that disrupt sleep. Don't nap after three p.m. So this one's kind of weird because, like, if you're like a if you sleep later kind of thing, then three p.m. is kind of like an arbitrary number. It doesn't kind of doesn't completely make sense. That's super weird though. And like, so why why is that though? Um, well, I think they use a three p.m. is they're just comparing to like normal people. Like normal people waking up at eight a.m. Oh. and sleeping at a certain so time. Then what's the difference between like napping at like two versus like napping at six p.m. Uh, so if, uh, I think the obvious one is if you nap too late, your adenosine gets lowered, so that sleep pressure in your brain uh, goes away, it's and then to fall asleep. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. So you, you don't get forced to sleeping as as easily. Uh, relax before bed. Um, take a hot bath before bed. So the big thing about the hot bath or, or hot shower is that your blood vessels go to your skin uh, while you're taking a hot shower, and as soon as you get out of that hot shower, it releases a lot of your core body temperature and it lowers it quite quite a bit. Lowers it, isn't that good though? Lowering your core temperature? Yeah, so you want to take a hot shower before you sleep. Uh, so, okay, when you when you take a hot shower, 
your blood goes to your skin because it wants to oh, release is, oh, temperature. Okay. Yeah. No, I'm yeah. mis- I'm reading this wrong because yeah. uh, I I thought you're listening or you're listing stuff to avoid or like don't do, but it says take a hot bath yeah, yeah, before yeah. bed. Yeah. I was like, dude, I do this all the time. Yeah. This is yeah. it, 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 it helps quite a bit. Uh, that's usually part of my routine too. Um, for your bedroom, dark, cool, and gadget free. So in next week's episode, we'll talk about like why blue light and shit from your phone and screens and sh- stuff's really bad for sleep. Well, red light. Does it talk about inducing more red light? Um, so I think lights from gadgets in general have some effects, but blue light, the wavelength of blue light has a more significant effect. I heard red light's supposed to promote your body to go into sleep. Uh, That's an example of something that gives off red light. Uh, you need like a specific infrared lights, shit yeah. and stuff. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Um, like you can have dimmer lights. Like, like you know, I think these lights are warm colored and stuff. Uh, but blue light itself is sp- is specifically bad. I'm not too sure about red light. Uh, I think it probably has lower effects. I'm not sure if it's zero effects though. Uh, another one is have at least thirty minutes of sunlight exposure during the day. Um, so I actually heard a lot of podcasts about the whole sunlight exposure thing i just haven't read up completely about it viv do you know why the sunlight exposure helps uh sunlight exposure helps because it helps increase your cortisol levels during the day oh yeah so then you have more of a yeah you're, so it's really good to get natural sunlight right when you wake up and then that'll kickstart your entire yeah. circadian rhythm and everything yeah and usually that that light also from devices but more effective from the sun is it takes away that that melatonin so like it shuts it off it just tells the body like hey this is no more uh which is why it's bad for you to look at your phone b- before you sleep yeah. it also depends on what time you get that sunlight too because the sun's rays will be at different intensities during the day uh so it's best in the very morning and then early afternoon yeah i think i think for the average person just getting sun exposure is good enough <laughs> i think most people don't uh, and the last one is what our star was saying uh in the very beginning don't lie in bed awake do something that relaxes you instead so if you can't go to sleep for whatever reason go um go do something else and then feel more relaxed and then you can go to sleep uh so this is the basics i guess the basics of what i talked about next week we'll talk about the more intense shit do you guys have anything specific you want to talk about here on the basics i really stuff. hope i'm not that fucked because i used to like not sleep at all for a long time yeah i mean every time so like when you told me about that we were on the podcast and i was always so worried <laughs> like not about current viv because like current viv can probably deal with it but like my biggest worry is the whole dementia thing that's all that's like the thing i key in the most to yeah that shit's scary and mm. um well like are you, like basically it's like are you even in control of your life anymore at that point right yeah but the other thing is it's not even are you in control of your life it's like are you poisoning yourself but very slowly oh yeah mm-hmm. but i mean like after you get dementia it's like yeah oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. At, at that point you're you're fucked right like yeah. you're not truly living life yeah, anymore, right? yeah, yeah but like for me the, the biggest thing for sleep after i read the book it was like after i read all the section of the shit it does to you when you don't get enough it's like fuck am i like purposely poisoning my body if i don't get enough sleep which is why i'm always so like self-conscious about it so then i'm curious like what what are some ways that you can measure or benchmark yourself your sleep to like what like your sleep uh i don't know how to explain it but like like your sleep health uh okay so they have um in the book they have a very simple like questionnaire you you can kind of take to see if you're actually getting enough sleep if you want to get like really specific, what I did is I bought the Aura Ring. And you can actually <laughs> I was just that. gonna say he's gonna but, promote this ring. But, that he is. Okay, so I'm not because I actually think the ring is kind of a gimmick. It's it's so short term. So like, I think okay, I personally think every family should buy one ring, and then you should use it. Each person in the family should use it for three months, because I feel like after three months of using the ring. You kind of start to get to f- get like a good feel of like what good sleep means uh, or what what good sleep feels like to you, and you kind of get a feel like, hey, this is this is ho- how much sleep I should be getting. I should be sleeping around this time. Mm. Uh, it's it's cool because it kind of becomes a game. Like you you like start to like you get sleep scores every night and shit, and you want to get like max sleep score. Mm. Uh, the problem with the Aura Ring is that it's kind of shit because it doesn't measure um, sleep that accurately. Like it measures sleep semi-accurately but it, i think it undershoots how much sleep you're actually getting so like some nights i feel like i have like the best sleep ever and it says i only slept for five hours and i think 
from what I researched online, a lot of users are saying that they don't, uh, they think that when you're moving, you could like technically when you're moving, you could still be in sleep, like in, in NREM sleep, but the ring thinks you woke up and stuff. Mm. Oh. Yeah. So it, it, it undershoots that quite a bit, but if you're like super into it, you can get one of the like whoop straps or like there's a bunch of devices now. Um, I think, I feel like, and we'll, we'll talk more about this in the next episode. There's going to be like some future implications on this. Like if you know that sleep is going to do this much to your health, um, I feel like companies should be doing like uh, incentives, right? If they gave everyone their company a whoop strap, if you can hit this target like X amount of months, then you get some type of incentive. Either it's like a hundred dollar rebate on something or like something like that. Then that'll like mo- motivate the team to to do it a bit more. So you know you know how you're talking about, you know, after you get sleep deprived, uh, like y- your baseline drops and your threshold whatever drops, right? So then like, I'm curious to see or like figure out how, because obviously like you can measure your your sleep score like on a day to day basis. Yeah. But then like like long term like what is your like threshold at? kind of thing like, what, what do you mean threshold like how much sleep you need or? so like yeah so like you know how you say you can't really catch up on sleep yeah right yeah, so yeah, like yeah. let's say like your sleep habits for the last like five years or like i don't know six months has been really bad yeah right and then you put on the ring and it's like oh you're, you're recording and you're like oh like i got a pretty good sleep score yeah but then like because of like where you started being like such a bad sleeper oh i see, I see. you know what i mean um so I don't know, like, so the book keeps saying like, yeah, you can't completely catch up with sleep. I, I, I think what they're trying to say is like the, you can't catch up with the like benefits of compensate. Like, I think what they're saying is you can't catch up with the benefits of sleep. So as in like, if you learn something and you didn't sleep properly, you're never going to get that thing that you learned back. You can't just catch up and all of a sudden like, oh yeah, learn those things. Oh, okay, gotcha. And then if you're like, if, if you lack sleep and your cardiovascular health is going down, um, you might have to do more than just sleep to get it back to a normal level, right? If you all of a sudden become like o- obese or diabetic or all that mm. stuff like that, right? I think that's part of the, you can't just catch up on sleep, but also it's like the performance wise. Like the other thing they're saying is like, you can't catch up on sleep as in if you didn't sleep well the whole week and you try to catch up on the weekend, your your mental and physical performance is not going to catch up enough just in those two or three days. Over a course of a couple months, yes, you you can probably get back to a better baseline. Like ground zero. Uh, but like you can't just assume that hey, five nights during the week you have shit sleep, and all of a sudden on the weekend you uh, you know you sleep twelve hours each night on the weekend. That doesn't just help you catch up anymore. Like right. you already lost, mm. you lost the potential of benefit, benefit already. Yeah. So you can't just try to get that by overcompensating. Yeah, it's just like like the, I get. Yeah, I understand now. Yeah. I understand. Yeah. 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 Um, okay, so quick thing, uh, back to your normal question, like, what do people ask if, if like, or pretty much, there's a short question there, but the author, which is uh, Matthew Walker, his questions about sleep, if you're wondering if um, if you're getting enough, these are his basic questions. Uh, after wake up, waking up in the morning, could you fall back asleep at 10 or 11 a.m.? So I, I guess that's kind of ar- arbitrary, but let's say you wake up around 7 or 8. If you can fall back asleep at 10 or 11, then you probably lack some sleep. Uh, can you function optimally without caffeine before noon? So that's another baseline that they ask. Uh, if you didn't set an alarm clock, would you sleep past that time? So pretty much if you're going to ask yourself, did I get enough sleep? If you didn't set an alarm clock, do you, would you, you don't s- naturally yeah. wake yeah, up? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, do you find yourself at a computer screen reading and rereading? So that's one sign of you not getting enough sleep. And uh, do you sometimes forget the color of the last few traffic lights? That's probably like major. Oh, I never even like uh, think of that. I mean, like I, if you recollect it. Yeah, that's true. I'm not sure if I completely would agree with that last one, but mm-hmm. yeah. Um, but then, so each of these questions have like a score and then you accumulate the score and if it's past whatever, then, you know, you, you're probably not getting enough sleep. Uh, but I think a lot of sites have like a sleep questionnaire that you can also like kind of answer to, to see if you're getting enough sleep or not. How about you, Viv? Do you have any basics of sleep question? Um, my main one would be how fucked am I? Uh, I mean... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, okay. I mean, th- the question isn't how fucked you are. The question is, um, actually, it's not even a question. It's just like, <laughs> like, there's no, there's no other options though. Like, what's the, what's the alternative? All right. So my question was, if there was a way to measure my 
quality of sleep right now or how much my health has detrimented or been impacted by my lack of sleep in the past. My question is if I've slept enough now to correct a lot of the detriments that has happened to my health from not sleeping. Impossible. Impossible. Do you <clears throat> think that I've No, no, it's, it's 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 impossible to tell because we don't have a baseline. I know, but like if you were to guess, do you think I slept enough? Probably not, to be honest. I don't think so myself. Uh, because I, I, I like never really cared about sleep and I would even encourage myself in a way to not sleep. Like I would regularly have all nighters up until like maybe the last like four years ago or five years ago. That's not scary as fuck. Um, I don't know actually. Like I mean I like does it matter though? What do you we're doing a sleep podcast. What do you no, mean? No, no, but like but like what 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 else can you do other than just fixing your sleep now? Like you, you can't go back in the past and fix the shit. I, mean, I know, but on. I'm curious if the amount of sleep that I've been having in the last I would say two years that I've been focusing a little bit more on sleeping, if that's enough to kind of correct the effects that not sleeping has had on my health. Yeah, that's again impossible, right? Because if we don't have a baseline of before two years ago, then we don't know, or the a baseline of way back when. It's 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 almost like, okay, sorry, I'm I'm not trying to make you sound dumb, okay? But like, <laughs> shit, I didn't feel like I was sounding dumb. <laughs> it's like asking, like, hey, what if I start working out three years earlier than I actually started? No, no, no not out? not in that case. Like, if not sleeping and consistently having bad sleep for the last twenty years of my life. Uh-huh has caused certain like implications to my health i wonder if the last two years of sleeping better has at least helped that like yeah slow yes. down the onset yes. okay. <laughs> i think that was like the part that i was confused about earlier too and i think what jorge is talking about is that like like whatever state that we're in is like it's what we're in but the the detriments of having of not sleeping and uh like the the downsides of it is like mostly towards like learning new things picking up new things like habits and stuff like that so like like how quickly you can pick something up so i think like in that sense it's just like so the i meant like on a scale if there was a certain amount of points you needed to get until you got alzheimer's mm. If I got like 60 points from not sleeping in the last 20 years mm -hmm. and for the last like two years I've been focusing on sleeping, if sleeping more in the last two years has somehow brought down that level or I, if it's just halted at that level. I, th I think I think it's a threshold that you have to pass. So like so I think uh, like in order for you to get something like uh, I don't know. Like let's say let's just let's just use like a muscle tear for example, right? So it's like if if you don't rest, right? And you just keep working out and you just keep working out like whatever, eventually like you're going to get to a point where your muscles threshold like rips or tears, right? And then that's when you have like a muscle tear and that's when like you know, you're beyond repair, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think like getting this like sickness like alzheimer's dementia is like probably like that too like in terms of brain health so i think like the damage that you possibly did might be like all right yeah your brain is like in this condition but um like i think you would basically have to like Go, like I don't even know like, you have to do so MRI getting, on your brain if getting yeah. Alzheimer's was me reaching 100 points and I currently have accumulated 60 points from not sleeping in the last 20 years uh -huh. would that mean that in the last 2 years because I've been focusing more on sleep I have halted that process of gaining more points towards 100 or mm. I wouldn't go back right I'm guessing no, that's the answer I, think, I wouldn't I think, recess back to revert. like 50 no, no, but I think, it just isn't increasing to 100 and 100, I think 100 can, would be I the think, point where I would I get Alzheimer's you I think health. you can revert yeah. some of your health but okay maybe I'm just being too uh, direct but I think it's a moot point because isn't it trivial like there's nothing else you can do about what you've already done in the past it's like there's no like you just have to so first we never measured your baseline from back then so we have nothing to compare to so then mm -hmm. you just have to start with now right like what's your baseline right now and can you get better later well i think what she wants to understand is like like should i do enough to just halt it or should i like 
or should I do more to kind of like? But but there's no. Is it? But there's there's no like compensation. You can't compensate for something that's already happened for like this type of thing. But I I so think you can't go back. But okay, even if you can or cannot go back, would that change how much you sleep? Given all other benefits and stuff like that. No. So, so, <laughs> so, like, like, I guess what I'm trying to explain is like, it's a moot point because, I, like, yeah, I, I, I could say maybe, I could say yes, no. I think even if you ask like a real scientist, they'll be like, like maybe, just get sleep yeah, is like, the end. it's, it's like without testing, it'll be so hard to actually tell those things, mm, right? And then like, there's no baseline to compare to, so they'll be like, okay, what the fuck are we comparing to? Like, you have, okay, let's say that you could find out some way to figure out how much plaque you have in your brain, right? Uh, first of all, a different amount will cause different things for different people. Uh, that's number one and number two like what if whatever you have right now is less than what you had two years ago or is more than what you had two years ago but they don't have the data from two years ago so there's nothing you can do about back then the only thing you can do now is if you want you can figure out what your baseline is now and improve on that two years later right because you can't that's possible tim bro that's like the main part of my question but Okay, so if improving well, what is, is just, so so if, if start getting good sleep. So so if I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> I, okay, so what what I'm saying is is if so I I actually I actually have no idea like for sure, but if I say yes or if I say no, it doesn't really like matter to the actual outcome. Or right? you, oh oh that's what you're saying. Like what I'm saying is like if I said no, would that would that encourage you to sleep less? Because there's no, still other stuff. It's to more sleep. so for the knowledge of whether me sleep. It wouldn't deter me from sleeping less. I would obviously try to sleep more with right. the knowledge that, like, knowing that sleep is really good for you. Right. But my main question is that if I were to, if the sleep that I've done has halted that process, or slowed it down, or reverse that process or reverse that damage not in the sense of like potential mm. like how you're talking about if i in the last 20 years when i had a lack of sleep and when i wasn't focused on sleeping mm -hmm. it, it took away a lot of the potential learning and yeah. productivity and stuff that i could do but my question is mainly in the part of if i could slow down or reverse the potential of me getting alzheimer's uh yes <laughs> I mean, okay, so so there's okay, so I I guess your your question has to have some action afterwards, right? So so if you don't get enough sleep from here on out, then you will be more likely to get Alzheimer's. If you do get enough sleep from here on out, you'll be getting a less likely chance. It's but, less likely both ways, but my question is if whether it's less likely because it's going backwards, like I'm. Oh, I have no idea. Essentially, about that. curing my brain and curing those detriments that I've caused onto my brain health, or whether it's just halted or slowed down that process. But then, what Jorge's saying is that, like, it, it, regardless of like whether it reverts or halts, like you just gotta. Brad, I want to know. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. You'll have to find if they had some studies on if it could reverse. It. I I assume they probably actually have found some studies where it did help reverse it. Um, but that's just my assumptions. Like that's just from my knowledge of reading the book and what I think some of the studies they've had they probably already looked into this and they probably did find that it helped oh okay sick um, thanks so <laughs> yes i mean like sorry like i said i guess i'm i'm, I'm not trying to make you feel bad or anything but it's kind of one of those things where it's like i don't feel bad <laughs> re regardless of you knowing the knowledge or not like the outcome is still the exact the same steps are still the same yeah I yeah see. right um it just makes i guess you feel a little i, I it's, it's copium essentially yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's just copium right um, okay, cool. So thanks guys for tuning in. Pretty much all I really did in this podcast is just scared everyone to sleep more uh, on all the <laughs> shit it does to you. Uh, but next week we're going to talk about some of the like even further benefits. So like sleeping obviously helps with your memory and all that shit and helps a lot with your brain of like textbook like stuff. But there's actually even further benefits with REM sleep. And then we'll talk about some nasty diseases and shit regarding sleep. And then we'll talk a little bit at the end about like the future of sleep. Like what's, you know, future um or what we project or what we hope sleep is going to be for the future uh so yeah tune in soon to the next one guys Bye. thanks for listening bye, -bye. bye, -bye.